Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Romance in Grenada, Caraco, and Pity Matney. We are still with Mr. Livingston Kumar Nelson, one of the track and field legends of the 1980s. Um, last week, we had a part one. We're in part two. And in part one, I'll just rehash a little bit what we did. We've learned about Livingston um, starting in Tivoli and uh, Tivoli RC School, going on to SAS. We learned why he chose SAS. Um, we learned about the girls who would idolize him from afar. <laughs> we learned about the competition inside SAS, what happened in Intercol, his commitment to community development, to other schools winning. And so today we're going to continue with part two. And in part two, I'd like to say welcome first to the panel. So welcome to Shermian. And I can't, Shamian so far is the only one on the panel. The other people are having problems getting on. So I apologize for that. And I have somebody who I can't really introduce just yet because it's a surprise. So I would like to say, Mr. Livingston Nelson, welcome to you again. Thank you for joining us so we can continue the discussion we started. I want to start by for... asking you first, which I didn't get to do last time. How is your family? My how are they? How great. are you doing? Is everybody all right? How are you handling Everybody's COVID? Okay. Everybody is great, doing all right. Thank okay. you for asking. You were welcome. <laughs> it was, according to in Grenadian terminology, that was my bad manners last time. I really apologize for that. Sorry. Oh. I was so excited. We were so excited that uh, I, I didn't get to ask you. So we wanna, I want to talk a little bit about SAS first because you told me something, um, there's a merit, like SAS gives something what's equivalent here in Canada to Athlete of the Year. Um, I want you to tell me a little bit about that and maybe how much you won. Um, and then I'll go we'll, from SAS because we're going to use, we're going to transfer everything you learn in SAS and teamwork and so on. And I'm going to transfer it to the community and then I'll introduce my special guest. Sorry, not my special guest, your special guest. So <laughs> tell me Surprise. about the, the merits you won in SAS, in St. Andrew's Elementary School. You want me to tell about the medals or the merit? The merit. You, you had a name, Vic, Victor... Oh, Victor Ludurum. Victor Ludurum. <laughs> but Victor Ludurum is given, and you have Victor for the guy, for the male, and Vic, Victrix for the female. That is the person acquiring the most point or points, um, you know, for, for that season, for that sporting season. So because I was, as I said, almost like a, an official deck athlete, mm -hmm. um, I did the one, the two, the four, I did the long jump, high jump, I did the triple jump, the discus, um, and the shot put. Then I, and, and I always was either first or second in all those events. So at the end of the day, I acquired the most points. Um, as an individual. Yeah. So that made me Victor Ludurum um, for three consecutive years in SARS. Um, basically, that is in a nutshell. But let me just say, um, I must say in SARS during that time, we had some guys like we had um, just mentioned people like the Godfrey Augustine. I mean, these athletes, we had a crop of athletes that was, I mean, really, really extremely good athletes. Those guys and them um, were in almost a very similar category like me. Godfrey would do this. He was probably at one time a premier javelin thrower. Sorry, can I, you send me a picture with the athletes. Can I share the screen while you're talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. So Godfrey was a javelin. He did um, the shot with the discus. He did the one and the two. He did the four also. Um, Godfrey was long jump and, and high jump. Um, Godfrey actually is not in that photo, but uh, when you look at the photo to your extreme left, you have people like Orlando Walter Simmons. He was at one time SAS premier sprinter. And um, the tall guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven figures after Orlando, you see that Carl Vinson. Carl Vinson again was almost like um, a decathlete to the one, the two, the four high jump, long jump, triple jump, javelin, discus. Um, that guy right in the middle there, um, looking like the big, big figure. Yes. Big person there, that is, that is me. Um, <laughs> Todd to the right is Eugene Liquish between the two ladies. 
And then you have um, my former master that was there for a long time, Eric Donald. Actually, at the front row, right at the front, um, the tall guy kneeling down, um, stupid down there is Godfrey Augustine. Oh. And then to his right is Dev. Yeah, that is Devon George. I mean, yeah, I think Devin I Devon George is from our area. He's a Ladig fellow. Yeah, Devon. Devon Judge was one of them also the captain. He's a guy actually that sad, but he was such a determined guy. Mm -hmm. And he was responsible for trying to transform convent. He actually transformed make convent um, a powerhouse in sports. So Devon Judge was also coming from SARS, was really, really, really good. So um, this was most of the, the persons that rose to serious prominence. I think I could name almost everybody there, but I don't know if that is a, there is a need to do that. No, 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 not necessarily. Right. Um, I just wanted to, so basically this is your team maybe from around what year? 19, maybe 1981, 81. I would think. And close to me, that teacher in the back with the, with the glasses, his name is Neville Glean. He actually also went over to, to McDonald College okay. and transformed sporting activities in McDonald College. Also. Excellent, excellent. So we have persons that left SAS and went beyond. Um, as I said, the guy to the extreme left was one of the sprinter, and then he became a teacher the year after. That is Orlando Walter Simmons. Oh. Um, that was 1981, I think, because they were in 80. I think they left um, Patrick Simmons, Walter Simmons, and a few of them left. So uh, uh, all their photo was going to see Patrick Simmons and the same guy as Adley. OK. I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, right. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And I'm glad we get, we, I was able to share it today. Um, I, in, in terms of talking about SAS, I know the whole structure, it, it probably they took some time to build up, to put strategies in place and to get together a good team. As you said once before, SAS had the tallest athletes I've ever seen. Um, and you had very powerful athletic bodies. Yes. So before I, I ask that, I think I'm, I have the guests, um, your surprise guests waiting long enough. You did a lot of community work and stuff. So I'm going to swing to community and then back. I learned a few things about you after this interview. People calling uh -huh. me and giving me all kinds of information, uh -huh. including my mom calling me and saying to me, um, you know the person that did the drums and when in my sister, in your sister's wedding, and Sandrian's not here today, it was her wedding, is um, Livingston's brother. They had a drumming group together. And I said, no way, like, that's Rennie. Yes. <laughs> and she said, yes, it's Livingston's brother. And yes. we, in my sister's wedding, we had something called a caracal wedding. So my mom danced the cake in the tray on wow. her head and Rennie bid the drum and, and sang the song. I didn't want to show it here because I don't want to steal away from you, but I understood from you that you're the one that started this group here in Canada. So yes. I'm going to go quickly to number seven is a special guest. Number seven has lots of connection to you. And number seven is, you mean very much. You, you, you've changed the life of number seven. Number wow. seven, please reveal yourself. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I must ask first before I reveal myself, because uh, Cindy and you did mention earlier that we have to get our parents' consent to be recorded. <laughs> so. <laughs> it is given. It is given. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's a good it's one. surprising, Nautica. <laughs> Hello, Nautica. Nice to see you, Nautica. <laughs> Yes. How are you, Nautica? Nautica. I am well, thank you. <laughs> you? Good, good. Nice to see you and welcome. Very welcome. nice. Surprise. Nice to see you. Look. <laughs> That's an ambush. What is your yeah. I wanted to <laughs> a good show one. how small the world is and how connected Grenada is. And that's why I raised yes. the question. I'm sorry. I raised the point about the drummer in my sister's wedding so many years ago was Livington's brother. Now we have somebody that's Livingston's adopted daughter, I would say, or, or so, you know, in that sister. But we're all friends and we never knew there was a connection to Livingston. So Nanika, tell us how you connected to Livingston. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so he, I was just trying to change my name, sorry. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Um, <laughs> truly a blessing. Um, I know him from, he was my, my teacher. He was your teacher, your teacher in school. Yeah, I never knew he was a teacher, so this is another. <laughs> that's a, that's a new dimension here. <laughs> There's so much to him, right? He was one of those teachers, you know, and it truly is a blessing to have a teacher that will see something in a child and push that child in that direction. And this is who he was and continue to be actually for me. So, yeah, that's how we. we Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> So could I just say something here now? Um, in, the la in the first interview, Livingston, you said, how could you be a principal and you're not involved in your church choir or in your community group or in your... So I guess it's not just how could you be a principal. You think that the, the, person's, you, you, the private be is public. The private life of any individual becomes public because we all serve each other well. And so in that regard, that's how you saw yourself, I guess. Is that what, how you lived your life as a person? Even if I'm a private person, it's me, but I am a public person that I serve Grenada or Grenadians or my village. Is that how you saw yourself? Well, I mean, because I was a teacher, I think teacher mean that you are public, you are supposed to serve. And um, even if you didn't like it, mind you, um, originally I never had the intention of being a teacher. But um, once the call came, it was my first job opportunity. I felt it was my responsibility to get into the mold of a teacher. And a teacher mm -hmm. um, responsibility is to teach, to motivate, to help as much as possible the students that is, you know, you are charged with um, to influence. And um, I, I remember it was not just Nautica. Um, there were a few of them that Nadika remained as my adopted daughter, but there were a few of them, five or six, when I reached by the gate, they would run, come and grab my bag. And um, each one would fight to see who would, you know, carry me up. And in lunchtime, they would all come around and we would chat. And it wasn't just only the, the, the young girls, there were some guys too on weekend, I would go and we would cook. And I think for me, I recognize as a teacher that these were persons coming from a poor family background. And for what motivated me was that I did not, I believe that the sacrifices made by my mom, uh, my father died when I was only five, yeah? But the sacrifices made by my mom um, is what motivated me and made me want to be better, wanted me to, to excel in every field I can. And I also believe that um, I wanted those children to feel so, that they are from a poor family, but they are not deprived, that there are opportunities that they can take. So um, seeing them for that as persons that have potential, that can do better, if they are motivated, I, I, I took on the responsibility of befriending them. Mind you, I think I was strict. I hope not that I would ask that I was strict. I wanted them to be, I, I, I was always a disciplinarian. But in the meantime, I think within the discipline, I, I believe I exerted and showed them a lot of love, a lot of um, you know, reason for them to, to excel. So. I um I think that 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 is what characterized my my teaching as it relates to to um the children on a one to one basis, but as it relates to the school, um I think I did a lot more in terms of trying to trans transform the school, uh, and today there are a lot of things that students would meet me and say, oh, it's because of me, they were able to do this or they do do that, and the school developed a, a, a serious name both in culture and in sports. Yes, was that the Tivoli RC school or? Nadika, I think you need to step in and prevent <laughs> me from talking all that talk. <laughs> but for me, it was Hermitage Government School. So it was oh, Hermitage. Oh, Hermitage Government School. Oh, great. Great. So we have another di dimension here to the. Listen, I just want to re re allow me to. From the last interview, you said. Um, and and I'm, pro I'm, not, I'm just paraphrasing. You say you had enough freedom basically to get into trouble when you were younger, but you chose not to, you didn't. Could you kind of tell us why or how, what was the pull, the pull away from that? Because to any young person now who's listening in 2021 may say, well, I guess they didn't have this in those days, or I didn't have, they didn't have that as, a, as something to cause you to get into trouble. Could you maybe say a word that could help some young person to see why that choice is always ours? Um, 
I'm not so sure if it is always because I think it comes with a level of awareness. For me, I was intimately um, involved in, 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 in what I see, the family struggle, my mom. My mom, my, let me just say, my dad worked on the estate. My mom worked on the estate and my mom went to England. And I, for me, I've always seen my mom struggling, wanting to make it better. So we remember I say that your parents, like the principal should be involved in your life and there should be this vision, this mission, like where you should be going forward. Yeah, so I think for me, I, from very early, I, um, I didn't want to work on the estate. I did not want to work as a, somebody that is working on a truck or so. I, 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 I thought I, should, I could take it a notch higher than that. So from very early that I was, I don't know, maybe blessed um, with that kind of vision. So I had this passion, I wanted to be something, I wanted to do something. And I, I also believe that people cannot be anything except if you see a future. Meaning you must want to be something 10 years, 15 or 20 years from now in order to make better choices today. So if you're living day by day, then you don't have that awareness of your future possibilities. But if you see yourself, well, in the next 15 or 20 years, I would like to do this, I would like to do that, then it empowers you or it brings some level of focus to you as to what you should do today. Let me just take an example. If you want to be the world's strongest man. You're saying it's a goal setting, basically. Set a goal. Right. No, well, I, I, some people set a goal and it is the formal thing, but some people have a goal, but it just come into you, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying you want to be the world's strongest man or you believe you could be the world's strongest man. So from today, it, 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 it focus your attention. You might have to start going in the gym. You might start to train. You might start to eat in a particular way. So if you have a vision and idea of what you can be tomorrow, then it influences your action today. And I think that is what made the difference. I hope I answered the question, Shemian. Yes, you have. But, but you see, it seems to me still a lot of young people get themselves into trouble and, and they don't take responsibility. Like you yourself, you say that you intrinsically had the desire to be better than what your parents were. And that's a good thing. Right. You know, there's nothing, there's no shame in what they did. Actually, it was honorable that they had something to do to, yes, to yes. at least help your family. But you know for yourself, because that's what they're working for, that you would be better than they are. So you, you took that seriously, that my parents want me to be better than they are. Even if they didn't tell you that, you do that for yourself. So maybe, but you wanted maybe, to be better than them. Maybe the world should not be better. So maybe, um, you know, maybe do better. A well, achieve yeah, more. Achieve, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So I think that, that, that was the the motivating factor for me to want to right. so, but, but more yeah, than but, what they had. So how yeah. do you motivate a young person in Grenada or anywhere in the world with this, this um, broadcast, with this forum, with the broadcast that hears this and say, well, this is my condition. I live here, you know, we poor or I'm black or um, how do you allow, what is it you, people need to see in themselves or telling themselves how are they to value themselves enough that I should set a goal for myself? Yes, there are people, society is responsible to a certain point, but the rest of the responsibility lies on you. How do you motivate them to learn that, to know that intrinsically from, them, from you know, within one of, themselves? One of, one, one, one of the things I, I am, I've had some discussion with some student one time, um, you know, because I went, um, it was actually at the university level um, and they were Grenadians, actually in St. George's University because I did, I went there as a guest on three occasions. So the question I was asking them, if you follow that path, like, okay, let us imagine like you just like to smoke um, or you like to drink or you, you, know, you just like to womanize. And um, so let us use womanizing as something that is, that I believe has led to destruction for a lot of men, right? So um, Nadika is sitting here and I, I, she, ha, she can relate to a story, um, maybe, maybe closer or more intimately than what you probably too would understand. Um, one day she came home, Nadika, I'm talking about Nadika now. She came to Grenada and she was relating um, a gift she had to bring for someone. And when she went there, she was so appalled. She was so disappointed 
that when she brought that gift for that individual, she saw the condition of that individual. Now, that individual was someone, a guy that had some riches at his disposal. But, you know, men believe that they can conquer the world, um, uh, conquer the world. <laughs> men believe they can get bragging rights by, by, by talking about how many women they have, they say, um, yeah. so, quote unquote, conquered. And in the end, you see the destruction. So I used to use that example to tell, to speak to at last, uh, I say, you, see, you know, this man, this man grew up in our village. This man had X amount of land. This man had X amount of wealth. Today he is living in a place. Um, he's defecating on himself, all because he had spent his young, strong days um, chasing women, yeah, and making those choices. So I am saying, then you have other guys, you, you look at the village and you see that they are constantly drunk and you, you go back in their youthful days. Who do they want to impress? They are always drinking, they are always smoking, they are always hanging and they never put their shoulder to the wheel. So for a young person, I would say to them in a nutshell, um, look around and see who would you like to be like this person, that person. Without calling names, can you, you know, would you like to be somebody that in your old age, you're sitting by the roadside asking for something? Or would you like to have a home and a family? What, what would you like to be? But if you want to be any of this, what is it you're doing now that can lead you to any rich track? What, what are you following? So I think it's not just the future, the present, but the future would inform you as to where you can or cannot go. And are you, re do you really, really want to be somebody of what but why aren't you working why are you drinking so much beers are you going to save some money are you going to save some money from the cigarette um if you're there with joan and jane and jelly and everybody at the same time and everybody need your attention would you be able to make it in life to that if you're giving them all their attention so i think if you we, we break it down to those levels you can recognize that you can choose a path that would empower you to be better in a nutshell i'm saying Yes. Um, yeah, so again, you. you've answered many, many of my questions. <laughs> um, one of the questions, though, I want to bring you back in terms of, it's really related to what you just said, in terms of setting, laying plans for the future. And I want to talk about that in terms of your achievements through levels. Because as a young athlete in La Digue, I only, I didn't have any athletic aspirations. I just had the genes. And for example, Evelyn Pitt would come and say to me, do you want to represent La Digue in the Eastern Games? I had no goals about at athleticism. I, I have the tongue tied too. And I know you've gone through, so I just want you to walk me through the levels in athleticism because I, I do have a picture too I want to share. Um, so we have Tivoli, SAS Intercall National. Then you went, we had on the Eastern side, we have Eastern Games. You participated in that because I remember one year, I think Tivoli Hermitage joined up and Deborah George and you guys, yeah, you, you won, I think, yeah. um, <laughs> because you had the best athletes so, on that day. Um, then we had Wits and Tides in Grenada. Mm -hmm. And from Wits and Tides, what happens? Well, uh, let me tell you, I think um, when you are in primary school, some children can skip, like you can want to be um, for me, I'm just talking about me, how it happened with me. Um, I wanted to be in SARS. I wanted to go to a school and I would like to run for secondary school. So from primary school, I wanted to go to a secondary school. When I reached in the secondary school, I wanted to run for, I wanted to represent Grenada. And when I started representing Grenada, I wish I could go to the Olympic. So for me, that's how it happened. It didn't start, you know, going from primary school to the Olympic. So at certain levels. I think it's the same thing with me with academic. I just, you know, it, it became like that. So you go a notch higher. Um, so, so you start dreaming, you start, you start fantasizing, and then you start observing what can make you from primary school to make you go to secondary school. So you must pass your, your exams to go to the secondary school. And then for sure, that would make a step because you are prepared to train, blah, 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 in order to reach where you want to reach. So that is how it started up for me in terms of steps going forward in track and field. So um, you were one of Grenada's, I don't know if you still are Grenada's youngest athlete in, um, in Karifta Games. 
you age 15. Are, is, do you still hold that record? I'm going to show I'm not so sure. <laughs> I am not so sure. <laughs> That's you also... that, that, was a first, that was a first time for me. Uh, let me share the screen so the panel can see. Uh... <laughs> we say hello, hello to Raymond. You at 15. Is Raymond on? Yes. Raymond Hi, is Raymond. on. Ricky? Welcome, He's welcome. On mute. Tell him unmute is, Ricky is mute. Ricky, I'm not even seeing him, so you're doing better than me. Ricky, are you there? And if you're there, you're muted. So you unmute mute yourself. Just, just unmute yourself. At the bottom left, Ricky. There's a mic there. Livingston, I think you're still the host because I'm not seeing Ricky. But that's um, funny. No, you are the host. It's the show you as the host. Yes, but I'm not you. Just move the screen. Cindy, just move I guess screen. maybe it's your view. Perhaps my screen is probably uh, too narrow. You could move, you could I... move the screen and you'll see all the um, participants. Thank you. Your you change your view. Oh, okay, yes. Hi, He's mute. your mic's still muted. Unmute your mic. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Mr. Tobias. Oh, Mr. Beggs. Uh... Well, you know what? A lot of people don't know me as Tobias. I'm sorry. So I would prefer to use Ricky Beggs. the last name of Ricky Beggs. All right. And on the screen, you have Raymond. So I know you too as Raymond Tobias. So <laughs> also known as Ricky Beggs <laughs> or better known as Ricky Beggs. Better known as, yeah. Thank so, you for, for joining the panel. And uh, thank you for being on the panel. So, so far you've, um, we've had Livingston talking a little bit about um, goal setting and how he got to where he was. I want the uh, people out there who's going to be seeing this to know you are from Tivoli also. Uh, you am. also went to SAS. You were also a SAS athlete. Uh, yes. We had Nautica Sinclair is a, a special guest. She was brought in just uh, to, to showcase the community commitment that uh, Livingston had. I don't know if you ever met Nautica. She's from Hermitage. And um, I'm familiar with the face, but not, not the name, really. Okay, so I was just about to share a picture with. Um, uh, it would be good for Ricky to, mm -hmm. to to give his view as to what he knew about me because as a, as a resident of Tivoli, although yeah. the um, Kenwin Williams was much in sport and they yeah. actually live together. That's mm -hmm. the one with Kenwin Williams we call Busy, right? That's Busy, yeah. That's yeah. Busy, my, my yeah. adopted brother, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, all right. You want to talk a little bit about uh, about uh, Livingston and what you know about Livingston in terms of community development, in terms of athleticism, in terms of drumming. But bef before we go into drumming, Livingston, I want to show the pictures I have of you being the youngest. So far, I haven't been able to reach the Grenada Athletic Association as the youngest character uh, games. I'm going to share the screen now. Right. If only I can find my picture. I'm sharing the screen, but I can't find the picture. <laughs> Sorry. This is so share the screen. You had to come. Well, Am I sharing? When you get it, when you get not seeing anything as yet. No, no you're not. Oh, okay. Ricky, go ahead. Tell us what you know. I'm just going to put the picture up um, while, we, while we talk. Okay. Uh, <laughs> where should I start? <laughs> well, so, um, I, I have, I have, I've known Livingston for, you know, since he, he attended the, the Tivoli RC school. I think the school is known as Sacred Heart at the, at the moment. Okay. And um, from, from a young age, uh, you know, Livingston have been strong, ambitious. Um, he's, he's, the, he's the kind of guy who, um, I may say, like to take the lead, you know, and not in a bad way, in a good way, you know. He, he always, the, the, the kind of guy who nourish you, for what I know, you know. Uh, growing up, I was not really a much of an athlete in, in terms of being on the athletic team. I mean, I took part in everything that I, you know, used to just to give my house a point mm -hmm. when I was in SAS. Mm -hmm. um, but, but knowing Livingston from Tivoli School and, and into SAS, 
he has always been in the forefront, whether it's, it's, it's athletics, education, um, culture. Man, I'm telling you, when coming for cultural stuff, besides being the, the stalwart he is in, 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 Ricky, in, in athletics. Can you, Sinyan, can you go back to Ricky? Um, because I think the, the, the sharing is good enough now. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, like this. I like this one. Right. Yeah, we're getting better. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and um, from a young age, I could have seen that Livingston had the potential, you know, because he was one of the guys that I, I looked up to in Tivoli. I mean, growing up, uh, as they always say, he took a village to raise a kid. And, and I look up to Livingston as one of the bigger brothers, Livingston Godfrey from Tivoli. Um, his brother Gravels, I don't, some of you guys may not know Gravels. He was a very good cricketer. And, and I used to play cricket a lot too, so I, I admire um, Gravels at the same time. Mm -hmm. Also his brother Ras Stowe. But, but Livingston, you know, had portrayed that, I'm surprised he's not really a prime minister now or something like that, of Grenada. Um, he had the potential. Well, he's, he's, still, he's still alive, don't worry. Well, that's why I say he had the alive. potential to be the prime minister. You know, but, yeah. but Livingston had been a stalwart in, in, in every aspect of, of, of Tivoli, cultural, educationally, um, um, athletically. I mean, he had been there, um, always in the forefront, always helping out in every way that he can. Um, you know, so that's 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 a major thing to me. And, that's uh, that's great. Um, yeah. I want to. Sorry, go ahead. I want to ask Ricky in relation to that. Do you think that um, Livingston made himself available for those things, or, or you know, for some people it's natural. You know, your parents do this, so you just become a part of it. Or you think he naturally positioned himself to be all that you said that he was. Well, I mean, knowing what I know about Livingston, he, I mean, I, I knew his mother at a very, when I was like, I think when I re returned back to Grenada. So I never knew his mom. I never knew his father. He grew up with his, his brothers and his sisters, right? And, and I'm telling you, you wouldn't know the difference whether he was brought up by his, for his father and his mom or his brothers and his sisters. Because he had, he had the ability at a young age to take the mantle you know, to be what he wants to be, you know? And that, that's something I had looked up to, you know? And, and even today, I, I still applied. Even when he was in Canada, I used to see him once in a while. And, you know, he always, he always taking part in, in everything that he can, as long as, I, as he can elevate him to a certain level. And, and it's, not, it's not only elevate him so he can get praise, but to achieve what he wants to achieve. He didn't... Livingston is not a guy that was, probably was born with a gift. I don't know, he would tell you better. But I can see the hard work that he had put in. You know what I mean? He was one of the guys that, and I always used to say, I played soccer for a while, but I was never the person that can run a long distance. You know, wrong long distance, but I played soccer. And my old principal, God bless his soul, he's one of the, 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 the rock in, in, in a lot of SAS students, Cresswell Julian. Yes, right? Yes. Crystal Julian used to always tell us, run from home to school or from school to home and give somebody a bag. In that, in that way, you, you, you know, you, you build, you build, you, you, you build physically and also help you uh, mentally. And Livingston used to run every evening from SA school to Tivoli. We heard that. We yeah, heard that. I mean, and then, you know, he used to be on the beach. On, on Sundays and, and stuff like that. So I can tell you that Livingston is not just, he didn't have the ability, but he worked hard on that ability to make him what he is today or what he had achieved while he was in SAS and, 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 and you know, and so on. Excellent, excellent. That I'll just share one more thing. There's an old adage that says, hard work and determination always be talent when talent is too lazy to work hard. <laughs> right. So I think, I think even if you had talent, you didn't let your talent just sit there. You really work your talent and that helped you develop in a number of other ways. And as you developed, you saw other ways in which you can be better, but not just be better, but to help others to be better too. And I think Grenada, the rest of the world, owe you a debt to that. And we thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just want to ask Nautica, do you have any, anything extra to add to what Ricky said? Because you, Ricky was, we didn't know Ricky that Livingston was also a teacher. 
You didn't know that. We're learning that, that, that from Nadika, Nadika mute. Yes. <laughs> let Nadika, Nadika is muted. Go ahead, Nadika. <laughs> yes, he was a teacher. He was my teacher. He's my father. I just want to um, add to what, uh, is, can I say, Ricky or Raymond just said, and nice to meet you. Ricky. Yeah. Say Ricky. Say Ricky, Ricky. yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you. Um, helping others do better. And I think that's where he came in. Like he saw in the children, let me just speak for me. He saw in me what I didn't see in myself, right? And we're speaking of a school teacher, you know, it would be wonderful for us to have that today, right? He saw in me and today I still say, I don't know how he saw, where did I see that in me? Because sometimes I still don't. Um, this is someone that will push you, like I said, to what's your potential. He sees, he sees what that child is capable of doing. He speak about having, um, you know, a plan or a goal for the future. It's like to me as if he was able to see in that future, the potential of that child. One of the things that he, um, he actually drew me to was debating, right? I don't know if you remember that. I'm going and debating. And I'm like, me, can I debate? But there's something that he saw in me. And, you know, to, and I was going, representing the school debating because of him, right? Um, such a great influence because of his, his track and field and what he, he did. Um, it encouraged me and it also made me try out almost every sport when I was in GSS. Um, maybe I didn't win. Maybe there are times that I will come last or third or whatever, right? But that encouraged me. I, I did the, the shot put because he did it. I did the traveling because he did it. The, you know, the long jump, the whatever sport there is because I saw he was such a great role model, right? Um, and continue to be. And it, it, it's, you know, that, that one person, if nobody tells you that you can do this thing, he is the one that will tell you that you can do it. Go for it. You have that potential. Go for it. So again, it truly is a blessing to be here and to, um, to share that part. And, um, you know, over the years, our relationship with that, you know, grew, grew uh, closer. And um, this is where, you know, I would say today that he's my father, truly is my father. Because he didn't only just look out for me and just like me being in school when he was in Canada that time I was back home. And he looked out for me then also, right? Um, so, and even today, right? So um, it truly is a blessing. What a blessing it would be to have people in society that will influence our children and our children's children to, to um, be the best that you can be, right? That will see the potential in, in a boy or a girl and say, you know what, you can do this thing, even though you think that you cannot do it or you don't understand it. The picture that I have in my head today, almost every day is me standing on that stage with that, um, I believe uh, if my memory could serve me right in Guav, and I could be wrong because it's been so many years, me standing there debating, right? Representing the school debating because of my father. Right. That is excellent. That, that's very inspirational. Very yeah. inspirational. That, that father doesn't mean that he's a priest, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want, I want to tell you a father figure. Yeah. I want to tell you um, my experience. We, we knew Livingston when he came to Montrose and uh, with schools and them teachers. It was my first time learning to jump backwards. I, and I had a trust issue there. They were professionals, but I still didn't trust that because we jumped straight forward. We ran and right. high jumped. And they, I think it was Schoon, showed me how to turn around and, and jump backwards. And I didn't trust them until I landed. But then again, I saw Livingston in Canada. And I think that was in the 90s at York University. And Livingston doesn't, he's not just a leader on the field as we're learning now. Even in his carriage, you can see he's handsome, but you can also see 
an athlete, a leader. You know, the way he, I, I say he, glee, he glided across. <laughs> we were to, I was watching him at my Scott's library with a few guys. There were a few Grenadians, Trinidadians, and some Jamaican guys there. And he talked to them in this nice voice. And then he, he just glided away. <laughs> and I stood by the fire pit and I watched him just glide past. And his carriage was so commanding. Um, he is a person, just from his physique, you'd look up to him. Not all of us are blessed with physique, but he, he uses every aspect of what he has. So he uses his physical ability to lead um, and to draw people to him. He uses his, his smile, his attitude is very approachable, very mellow. And then he actually goes and get his hands dirty in doing work, doing the community work. And in living Canada, um, I heard he left Canada and came back to deal with, to become, based on what he studied, politics or something like that. The next thing I heard is that he formed a group called Tivoli Drummers. And this person said to me that drumming is a Livingston blood. No matter what he was doing, he would end up being a drummer. So <laughs> Livingston, let's talk now a little bit. And Ricky and Nautica, if you know much about the drumming, the Tivoli drummers, you can also tell, you know, jump in whenever. But Livingston, tell us about Tivoli drummers. But so, so sorry, before Tivoli drummers, because I think huh. the name Kumar, you want to tell me something, what does it mean? Tell me a little bit about it, because I never knew that was part of your name. Well, um, you know, you do history and you, you start, you know, you learn about yourself, your identity. And um, there was a saying, well, I'm an African, an African. Um, so uh, you recognize your history and what happened that you were misnamed, misidentified. And in order to reclaim yourself, I decide to add up an African name to properly put me in context. And um, Kwame Nkrumah um, ensure oversee the independence of Ghana in 1957. The first of his kind, he was prominent, very progressive in trying to bring on the Organization of African Unity together with NASA, blah, 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 Haile Selassie, the whole works. And um, I just admired his work. And so I thought I would adopt a name. But Nkrumah meaning the ninth child. So I left all the N and I just said Krumah. So I am not the ninth child, <laughs> but I am of African stock. So um, that's how the name came. The name came because of the lifting up or, or awareness of my identity and an appreciation um, of, of who I am. And so... Um, it is not strange that all my um, my is. children uh, has African name just the same because oh. that is what I think and that is who I think I am and we are. If I can just interject a bit about name, I, I have an affinity to name. I think your name is important. I have books that talk about how important it is. Your name is in terms... Dr. Livingston also is one of the Europeans, I think, that went into Africa and made oh, all yeah. these great discoveries. So you oh, have... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have the most colonial name you could think about. <laughs> but your they parents knew what they were doing. Discovered, I think, wasn't it Nile? discovered the river. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you got yourself that name from the, the, the African leadership spirit name in the Kumar and your parents also made sure because at the time I would think everything was about Europeans they also made sure they let the world know that you are a leader you are a man that's going to go into the jungle and explore <laughs> <laughs> and enlighten Next the world right. <laughs> so right. tell me now about the drummers um there is something I say drum in my blood but not my drum in me blood um, my father was a drummer, but my father died when I was only five. Mm -hmm. My father was used to be called Pipey. So the, the, the nation, the whole idea of drumming, if you have to talk about drum, it's, it's usually going to take a long time, but let me try to be brief. Um, so growing up in Tivoli, when my father died, I, I remember he used to have those three drums, barrel drums. No, those barrel drums were fashioned out of the old barrel that came from, from Canada, and it was cushion that used to bring salt beef and salt beef. Mm. And there was those same barrel in the old time. Both used to be shipping the sugar and the rum that came from the Caribbean. So we fashioned the drum out of that, and that is where the name, the big drum came out. 
So my father was a master big drum player. And as I said, he died five. But since then, um, I always was involved in drumming. So I remember before, while I was in SAS, um, I think Ricky probably was too young, but we had organized a whole concert and I did a stick fight with Bobby Lee um, and Sak Sak and I had organized and I, because I was a drummer, I couldn't do. Ricky probably went in a lower form and did not remember that. But we, I had organized a whole concert in SAS. When um, Cresswell Julian had asked two teachers to organize it and the teachers couldn't get the cooperation of the children. And they called me to come in and help. So we put this program together and we did that. Um, since then, I formed a group in Tivoli. I was too young, so I get my cousin, they call Clegg and Joseph, to be the president. I so wanted to drum. Um, my father had taught a man, his name was Levi. Um, Levi, and Levi was a drummer. So I went yeah. back to Levi to help give me some, to teach me, to teach me. But also I wanted him to make a drum for me. So he made some two drums for me. I formed the group and then the rest is history. So we had a, a cultural group in Tivoli. And then afterwards I went in Hermitage and I transformed the whole school in Hermitage. So Hermitage used to eventually come first in choir singing, in poetry, in, in everything. And again, um, when I went to Hermitage, that's when Hermitage came three consecutive first in the parish in, in, um, in the parish sport, and then the parish came two consecutive first during my reign at the national level, primary mm -hmm. school level. So I don't know if Nadika would remember that. I know she couldn't run that fast. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I but 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 I, I I because of the training and and my I guess the level of inspiration I had with the children. Um, that was transformed into victory, both at the parish and at the national level. Um, and of course then, so that was a teacher, when I was a teacher at Homage, then I went to Canada. And when I went to Canada, I went to York University and then I went there and I founded a drum theater. So that was with my um, brother Renrick and some St. Lucians and other persons. And we formed this performing group, which became at one time the most prominent um, cultural performing group in Toronto. So we went to Hamilton, we went to Montreal, different places, we, and we performed over, I mean, several times to the Grenadian Association, the Jamaican Association, while we were in Toronto because of our prominence. Um, and then I came back here in 94. So sorry, before you, before you went back, you also had a poetry. Um, so you're into literature. Yes, I used to, well, I'm, I'm also a, a, a poet, so and an, an short story writer. So we had this, this poetry group and famous name like um, Hudson George. <laughs> um, we call ourselves the Pope Poets. And um, he had one named Coffee, um, a few guys from, one from Jamaica, two from Trinidad. And then we, you know, we had this group where we used to just meet all the time to do poetry. So um, I got myself involved in that. And I also got published with the, there was a publication that was done at York. It's called A View on the River. I don't know if it's, still exist. Um, I published two short stories in that. Um, maybe I can tell you that experience because it was so dramatic. Now, I was the, everybody else in that poetry group, there was about maybe a nine or so persons there. Just a small group would meet and read poetry. And everybody, they had a master's or a PhD. No, and I only, I was only a student. I was the only black person. And so when they asked me to read, I was so intimidated because, you know, I was, I was writing in my, in my, my colloquial and my creole <laughs> and um, I know my grammar was not always there. And I mean, I was almost trembling. And then I read, you know, I couldn't help. I couldn't run back. But, and, and then I read and everybody stood and I said, well, maybe I should head for the door. <laughs> Not a word, you know, and the number, the, 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 the quantity of praises that they bestowed upon me and they're telling me back to their roots and how they feel and how they felt. And in my, I mean, and they start, you know, um, giving so much credence to my, to my poetry and short story that it baffled me that these people and, you know, and they were saying that they, they had lost that touch with nature and um, capturing it and blah, blah, to make a long story short. So anyway. <laughs> That was in, in, in Toronto. Then I came back to Grenada and um, there was a, a group existing here. Um, and they used to do this, what they call ballet and singing. And I intended to form a drumming group. So I founded a drumming group and the group, the group came, became the Tivoli drummers. 
Now, Tivo de Joma, it is, this year will be our, supposed to be our 20, 25, 24th about year. Oh, wow. And um, one of the things that is significant that we had, we went back at Fungi Drum Theater and then we had a drum festival there. And the first group that came down to our drum festival was Drum Theater. So the group I founded in Canada came down to drum festival. Mm-hmm. Apart from that, we went to Mutadi, um, Toronto International Drum Festival on two okay. different occasions. We went to Antigua. We were the only the host of the Antiguan government. Um, we went to Cuba. We went to Guyana um, in Carifesta. We went to Trinidad in Carifesta. Um, where else? We went to St. Lucia, to St. Vincent. We never went to Barbados. Right. So, um, yeah. So... I think those those group and we have brought we brought over fifty groups to Grenada, showcasing our talent and our drum festival became is like the festival for the region, um, which was run by Bootstring boot, boot um, um, support. So Tivoli drummers coming out of Tivoli drummers, we we Tivoli drummers became a group that um, you know allowed us and poor people, children. Mm-hmm. to get a chance to, to, to get a passport. I mean, most of the children never had a passport. They never had a travel. Most of them never traveled since then, never traveled before. So I, it was a real good thing for me to be able to take this number of children from Tivoli and other places and bring them to Canada, bring them in Guyana, to Trinidad, to Cuba, um, you know, to Tobago in the Heritage Festival, um, to Guadeloupe. We went to Guadeloupe, we went to Martinique, um, you know, so that, that was really, really amazing for me. And that is the joy I got from doing that. All right. Thank you. In a nutshell, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me nutshell. just say quickly that I, I, I feel so motivated more now that I'm here in, in my sphere of influence the more, not just here, but to maybe to see if I could extend my hand as as far as I can to reach as far as Grenada. I feel very inspired and motivated by, by your story being here. You didn't allow your status as a little one person, maybe from Grenada. I'm not sure many people from Grenada, like Cindy was there at that time. I was not at York at that time. That you didn't figure, well, you know, I'm the only person here. I could just, let me just slip into my class and slip away and get home. Because most times that's how you feel. You feel kind of lost in a big university with thousands of, in fact, maybe the size of the university says that almost the population of Grenada and you feel literally lost in a class. You go into class and there are 500 students there. You just feel like you want to be lost. I never, I never made myself lost in a class, but I never really stayed around to be involved in anything at York. But now it's not too late to get involved in more things and I feel inspired. Thank you. <laughs> And, and I think the history of Grenadians, basically, we, we have a lot of leadership qualities. And um, yeah. so as a Grenadian, you should, you know, you continue that tradition. <laughs> and um, and there, there's an appeal, I don't know if it is too late, but for the both of you, um, your mother is dancing <laughs> when my brother is playing. So... <laughs> <laughs> Show me on. We, we have some things in the pipeline. We do be working a lot because right now I do financial literacy with young people. I am I'm, I'm trying to get people off our hue to be more forward thinking when it comes to finance. So we 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 take it on a broader scale, but I mean it's it's still in the cocoon phase yeah. right well, now. At least so. once you do what once you do you do it is as good. We do always have to be in the same field. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Thank I, you so I much. I am in, in, in that side. I am uh, but the dancing part, I will be the myth buster for every African <laughs> everybody of African descent in the you know. My my mom. I did a little show with my mom, and we were talking about um, a relative that had to dance the cake in her brother's wedding because the the dancer they hired couldn't dance. And I just do what she did for one minute, and I was panting. So <laughs> I would write. Good? Some, I would write. You would drum. Somebody would act. Shomi is a very good actor. Ricky is a good actor. Nautica is a li- is a a, a debater. We're gonna co- collaborate. Don't worry. <laughs> well, I'll I'm, also, I'm also I'm also a good dancer. Okay. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so I can, I can show my motion. Don't worry. <laughs> so, if I may interject here, um, Livingston, I have I have I've been to the jump fest that you usually have in Tivoli. Um, I've been there twice. I've been to it twice, and it was really uplifting. I really, when that uh, that group from Matnik came down. 
I, I saw that group and also a group from Trinidad. I can't remember which was, man, I'm telling you, it, it was like fireworks, man, looking at the, 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 the dance. And what, what amazed me was, you know, to get, seeing that you get these kind of, uh, you know, high-end performances to come to my beautiful Tivoli village. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> because don't forget, Tivoli is filled with, with, with a lot of history and people don't know yes. that. A lot of people don't know that. Yes. But Tivoli is filled with history that we have to dig deep. Not only Ladig have history. Tivoli got a lot of history. <laughs> right? So, uh, uh, but, but I, I, so, so, you know, sure, I, I, I was amazed by, by the performances, you know, that was, was, was happening there. Um, but um, since uh, I think the last time I saw it was in 2017. Um, anything, did you have any, anything organized within that or you put it on hold for now? No, um, we did something we called drum moonlighting since then, but it was just local, it was just of our own. But when right. we, we had, yeah. But let me just say two things and I'll come back to what you just said, they take off, take on from mm -hmm. what you left off. Um, at one time, um, as we keep talk about Tivoli is filled with history, um, SAS team we had on, a, on, a, on, on top of the top there, you had, my, you had Godfrey, you had BZ, you had myself, you had um, Thompson, um, Williams. Mm -hmm. um, as, as really, we had Sak Sak, you might have missed it, um, as, as key athletes from this area. Um, at one time, one of the, 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 the main sprinter in GBSS was Rocky Wells. That, um, George Wells, you know, Rocky, he was a top sprinter in GBSS at one time. Yep. We had Phil, but he was a top sprinter in PBC. And you had people like me in SARS, <laughs> and everybody from the Tivoli school. So we, we, we spread, we spread. Um, we keep talking about Tivoli is the home of drumming. And that preceded me a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. And our drum festival, when we keep, we keep talk about high-end performances, those groups and them that came, like we had the Tassa, we actually bring in the Kalinago out of Dominica. People used to call, we used to call the Caribs. They came. Um, we had the Voabel Dam and some other groups out of Guadeloupe and Martinique that came down. And the top groups from Trinidad, um, from Trinidad, um, Price Galan and all those groups, and then they came, um, Malik Folk Performing Theater. And what the groups and them said, in unison was that is the best festival they had ever attended. All the groups, without, without exception, that is the best cultural festival. They also noticed that is the, the poorest festival, meaning they recognize we had no money. We kill them with love. We kill them with love and hospitality. We had, because for some reason or the other, we got no support or very little support from any arm of the government. The most we got was one time from the Board of Tourism and they gave us $3,500. That's the most money we got from a government arm. And we are hosting six foreign groups in Tivoli. Oh. The quality is out of the world. I remember one time the person that was responsible for the Board of Tourism then, they, they said, Livingston, we never knew that that was such an event with such a quality. And that is when the next year we got the 2005. Eh? <laughs> Apart from that, they don't meddle because they don't have, they don't think, you know. And then we, so we, we were able to do that. So you reach a point where, you know, after running that shoestring kind of event, where all the organizers were volunteer, all the persons that we work, we used to work night and day trying to build up stage and borrowing money to build up stage, et cetera, just to do that. And Everybody believed that you had to do it on your own or you would make millions of dollars. And it was $10 at some time to go in, $10 to get in. At the end of the day, you don't you have no money to show. Um, some people believe you're making a mint, but it's $10 we were charging at the door. And we brought in six groups from overseas ask, at though? any one time. Could I ask, is the, is the drum festival on the Grenada calendar at any place? Um... It used to be. It used to be. The Tourism Grenada Board of Tourism at that time, now Grenada Tourism, but Grenada Board of Tourism used to have it on the calendar. 
and people mm -hmm. used to inquire and, and, and come. Um, we brought up one time a contingent from St. George's University, etc. But it was always our own effort locally. We didn't get the support from anything. Um, our best sponsor, our biggest sponsor was the Grenada Cooperative Bank. Um, and the Grenada, I mean, I don't know if I should, uh, maybe I shouldn't, but there was nobody, there was no big contributor. There was no big contributor. So we had to work as, I mean, night and day, the team to, in order to make sure that we can execute that event. So and is that still the case? I no, I mean, I can't continue. We did a March 12. We can't, no, it's, it's no longer the case. Okay. We so no longer I, have the drum festival. We could no longer have the drum festival. So I have to, I have to ask a question because I noticed, I watched your shows on, on YouTube now. Um, I've, they're really top quality. I wa also watched the Tobago festival, the Tobago Berlin festival. I watched uh -huh. St. Lucia and I know it's part of the government's agenda, the yeah. preservation of culture and, her and our heritage. And I wonder why this is not something, even maybe you get, people would advocate to have the government be involved in. I don't mean take it over because you want to have some level of control, but it's something the government should be uh, financing in terms of developing culture. And you're not only developing culture or, or recording our, our culture, you've also given kids something to do. You know, but, and um, one of the, one of us, the, 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 the story we had with Tivoli Jumas that um, Tivoli Jumas, we had this outreach program. We call it the outreach program. Mm -hmm. So we did workshop and we had several photos with um, Anlika High in St. George's. We had an invitation to schools, all the schools in St. Andrew, that we can come in and work with you. Um, at least all oh, allow us to do a concert in your school. Um, most time that was never taken up. We had a performing group that we were train in Birch Grove in St. Andrew. We had a performing group that we were training in Mount Horn, St. Andrew. You know? Um, and of course, we work with a lot of other persons here, just training. How do you get into the Tivoli Jumas? We just want you to, to be disciplined, to come on time every time on time every time on time that was it you had to there was no application fee up till to the last there was no application fee there was no money collected from anybody and we did that um so we had that but the government did not see it as part of the priority um in order to help but one of what made the drum festival a, a little bit more easily to to be executed was that groups like from Tobago and Trinidad, they get funding from the government to come. Yes, that's what I'm So we didn't have to pay to the ticket. And it's an annual We did not thing. have to pay those groups ticket, you know? <laughs> so the groups from Trinidad, they would call and they would get funding for the tickets. We would, once they were in Grenada, we, were, we had responsibility for everything. The lodging, the everything. But the FA, they paid for me. Tobago, same thing. So some groups from Trinidad and some from Tobago, two from, they came four times four times and every time they wanted to come back. Sometimes we say, no, we need to rotate. And they will keep on begging because as far as they're concerned, there is no other festival. I mean, we, we went, I mean, I don't want to make it come personal as a boss so people you're listening, bear with me. We went to Tobago Festival, Heritage Festival. And um, maybe with my biasness, I could accept that our drum festival was in terms of the quality of performances, the execution was above the norm, was above, yeah, but yet our, the private sector by and large and the government did not see the need to invest in drum festival. And there were events that came on along around our time because we existed the drum festival for 12 years. And they would give one organization $50,000. We said, you know, just give us 10, <laughs> 10. We don't want all that 10 because we make it work. But we wouldn't get nothing, they wouldn't get nothing. So. So After a while, no, you know, you get burnt out, you get tired. So and, no special um, budget put aside. Because this, for me, I look at you coming, you transitioning from track and field into community events, still keeping young people actively involved. Um, it, but it seems like the government would rather they be sleeping. Because if now you can't 
afford to keep the festival going any longer, then there's nothing for kids around to do. Not only that, it's a value to tourism as well. Yes, so there's a community level and there's a national level. The value to, to, to tourism, the value to culture, and the value to social we, development. Uh, Each child gets economy. to. So yeah, and, we have um, to, probably we have to call them out now. We have to call out even privateers or <laughs> private enterprise. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you have to the, thing is, the thing is unless we look at this the, this this whole cultural thing as part of our heritage Which you see, is. yeah we have to look at it as part of our heritage if we, if we don't look at it that way then there will be nothing happening put aside living stand on what what he what he, he he's doing or what he had done because right now it seems like everything's a little bit stagnant not for the last two years of within the pandemic i'm talking about prior to that um I remember when I was growing up, I, I think you guys um, can, can uh, refer to that, or Livingston, there was a group by the name of Youth Quick. You remember that group? Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a national, it was a national group, yeah. which, which, which was picked from different villages to represent mm -hmm. Grenada. And, and it was going strong. And, and if I'm not for, um, forgotten, I think Trevor Hutchinson, which is, a, which is a very good friend to the family, was, was very much involved in that group. And and it and I think it was funded by the either tourism or the cultural, whatever it was. But it was then something to look up to. And and it just faded away. It faded away and, and then Livingston came in and you know, he tried his best. Because I, I I can tell you, I don't know if three of you guys ever attended that that uh, that fest. I Man, I'm telling you, it's beautiful. beautiful. Sorry, I only saw it online. Yeah. Well, but I've heard about it. But yeah. But let me it just is, say that See, really, almost every other group you can think about, um, they got funding one way or the other. Sometimes not government, sometimes private. See, really, Jamaica right. has never been funded. We have never had a funder private with all our years of existence and all our showcasing. Because I, I think in the last 20 years, there is no other group in Grenada, performing group, that has made the mileage um, as Tivoli Jumas. I mean, everywhere we go, we rock the place. Everywhere yeah. we go, we rock the place. Yeah. And anytime the Board of Tourism or so, anybody they want to showcase Grenada, they call us. So we charge them for the performance, but we never get funding. Yeah? When we went to Canada, we had to pay. I remember we had to pay. Although we didn't get funding, we paid our money. In some instances, when we travel, we paid our money. We always purchase our costume. We always pay for our transport. We, every end of the year, we went to dinner in one of the most prestigious hotels for our members. We, mm. we did that on our own. We never had a corporation saying, well, we can give you $500, $500 a year. Mm. As, well, as low as 500 We never had a corporation that would say that to us. Never. Livingston, sorry, and I know I'm late in the conversation, so I probably missed something. But why do you think, because um, to me, and I, and I saw you online a, a few years ago, but I, obviously I couldn't make the correlation. I just saw this really good drumming group from Grenada, and I'm like, oh, they're from Tivoli. This is really nice. And then it brought me back to big drum and stuff in Karakou. So for me, it was something so, it's such a great cultural experience. So what I want to know, though, why do you think that probably local government or the government, they're not into promoting it as something cultural or something, you know, you helping out the youth in the community and stuff. Is it, is it political or is it, they just don't come country? I, I want to go the easier route to say it is political because I'm always opposition. I'm generally opposition to the present administration. Okay. But, um, and I, it is difficult for me to keep quiet most of the time. That is a cocktail. That is a cocktail. But um, because mm -hmm. I will say, um, they just don't believe in culture and agriculture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. In a nutshell, they don't believe because they, nobody could get nobody could get payback or kickback from sponsoring a culture. Mm -hmm. They cannot see how you transcend mm -hmm. that into votes. something going in the pockets. Mm -hmm. You cannot see that. Nobody wow. can get some money into the pocket and they do not see the long-term effect of culture. Um, except if I, like, I remember one time they were so much at us because a group came from Germany, an organization, and they wanted some filming to be done to showcase. They wanted to do a special promotion. 
and of course Steve was the drummer. And I said, you know, we couldn't have the time because, of, and you know, they were they, they 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 were at me, at me, at me because they saw Steve was the drummer as the only group that could fully capture the culture of Grenada. But that, as far as it goes, after that, we are of no use to them. So they do not wow. see, they did not see culture or the performing arts in that way as beneficial to society or with immediate benefit to them. They, they, their imagination couldn't stretch that far. Um, you know what I think though? I think this is something that's very um, normal to Grenada because once it doesn't fit into the current political genre, like I said, I don't know, narrative, narrative. It, then it's, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not of no value. Occasionally, yes, we can mention the revolution and then it, it's not a good thing. Occasionally we can mention Cuba and then it's not a good thing. And so I think we, we don't know how to embrace Grenada as all, with all of its parts, as all of its parts, you, the good, the bad, the ugly, it's all Grenada and make it work for Grenada and let us see the value in everything. In fact, this here, the drumming, I think, well, 50 had come. We'll, we'll talk afterwards in regards to what's to come. Don't worry, we'll talk. But I, I think, I think, don't let it die. I mean, keep it in your heart. We can, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> let, 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 let me just say that in Tivoli Jamaas, our whole approach was holistic. Meaning, not only did we train with the dancing, we trained with the drumming, there was intense research as to our culture. I mean, that is why today I can go on any platform, like when we go on We Culture, we have this program ongoing, and I can talk freely because of the research I did in terms of the authenticity of our work. But a lot of our research is not always in the book, not always in books. It is lodged in the memory, in the dance of our elders. Mm -hmm. So it is documented, but not in books. So doing that kind of research, I've, I've done extensive in that. But we also, we, in Tivoli Jamas, we, we, we teach how to make drums, how to tune our drums, etc. So we have done, we were self-contained in that way. We did everything we can. And one of the things, all our repertoire, and this is a boss I've been always making, all the repertoire we developed in Tivoli Jomas came from Tivoli, from our creativity. There is no organization, no group, be it in Africa or anywhere else I can see, oh, we did that before. We, we have pointed out other persons that took our style. I mean, group as we have in Trinidad, came in our jump festival, record our stuff and go with it. <laughs> and they come and they admit that they use it and they have won several um, festivals. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could but, I ask you a question though? Have you ever thought of, I guess, maybe um, recording it yourself? You know, oh, I mean, you know, writing oh, a book and or recording the videos, creating your own documentary of the the to for posterity. So that well, let me next be, be, because of that, we used to have um, this group. Um, what was the name? Was Cable Vision? We used to pay them to come and record our jump festival. <laughs> And then they would still get right to show it. Eh? Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's their work because that's because, the law. Because, of we, 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 because I wanted to have these things recorded. And right. we would pay them. And they would still have the right to so, show something's it. Something's wrong. That was the one <laughs> no, no, that's international law. They made, the, they made the film. It's their material. Their material. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, okay. it's, not even a, it's not just a Grenada thing. That one's it's big. Um, but what I'd like to say in terms of culture we have to probably start now as we started this conversation we have to be more engaging we have to be persistent we have to let we ourselves have to know we want this so uh, many of us like now we say yes this is where it should go in fact Grenada is a tourism economy what are tourists coming to see what are they experiencing when they get there if not our culture fish, fish friday, fish friday. <laughs> but that's every village has its own thing as you say what i remember and shami and i don't know if you remember um over wasn't born yet i don't think in the 70s when ladig had used to have lcyc ladig cold youth club they used to have i remember people <laughs> come in i think river sally came um vandam constantine brochgove and uh, st david's there were some communities that always had cultural groups. And in Ledig, we had one, 
we used to have very big festivals, very big concerts, very big, and all these cultural groups used to come in. And it was such a community effort. Everybody was involved. Children knew, for example, I was singing a calypso this the other day, and it was so good. It was called, to build up a better Grenada, you have to invest in agriculture. That was done by a man named Mr. Sparks. I thought it was a professional Calypsonian. So I typed and asked everybody, have you ever heard this before? And one person said to me, I think Spock sang that in Ladig one time. That's how good we were culturally. And we've, we've made the shift, which is juxtaposed to our econ economic <laughs> viability now because we're claiming to be a tourism country and we're not preserving what tourists want to see or what tourists like. Mm -hmm. well, maybe we need no, we're not setting aside our pro we're not making our tourist product something that's a must see i think we could you know we have so much in every parish as, as you said earlier that we can have been as a really great tourist basket that every tourist wherever would in europe or in in north america would have to clamor to come to see in fact would pay pr uh, premier dollars now we feel Grenada sometimes is like the leftover Jamaica tourism, and they don't really have much, I'll be honest. They have the river, and uh, they have Barbados with a few be beaches, but our quality of sand is much better and different. But we, we don't see tourism as the product of Grenada. Every part of Grenada contributes to the tourism pie. We only see, we only say it. I don't know if we think that it's important to develop the parts that have things, you know, make everything work. You know, as, as Bishop used to say, um, Idle hands plus idle and lead to unemployment. So every square inch of land must be utilized. Every square inch of Grenada must be utilized for the Grenadian, the use and value of the country, oh. not for the value. Okay, we don't want to get into policy right now because I get a little bit more. Our human time. capital, but our human capital will <laughs> contribute our culture, our history. And as Raymond said, I am more historian. So I've been looking into a lot of, I, I do have Raymond, I have St. Andrew's history. But first, Ladig is more intimate to me. So my first project is Ladig history. So, <laughs> because I've been told um, Ladig have the prettiest girls also. So, I mean, I got to put Ladig ah. here. <laughs> ah, ah. As, a, as a man, you, you hit me hard there. I don't know about that. <laughs> Lord, the competition is mm. coming up. So we, 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 my project is first Ladig. Then my project, my, the second phase of my project is St. Andrews because St. Andrews have lots of history. Grenada on the whole, I, I find articles since the early 1800s, 1826, they're complaining that Grenadians aren't preserving their history or their culture. Wow. Yeah, that, yep, like, yep. I was, I was so shocked. Right, so right. I found the, a gazette. This guy in St. Lucia came to visit and he's seen us wasting our wow. talent and our culture away. We're not even, honing in on this. So we need to start something now. If, I mean, even as, as late go ahead. As late as 1985, I remember our historical society that's the Grenada Seven Adventist Conference School, Montreal School, we went to there was a I think it was a Carib um it was a Carib pit somewhere in Pearls and we would we dug there and got a lot of cultural um little pots Artifact. and stuff that that's nineteen eighty five artifacts that we cleaned and we we, we donated to the to the um, museum yeah. in St. George's and that's nineteen eighty five. I'm talking about Carib since you know when the history of the Caribs were in Grenada. Yeah. And yeah. this is nineteen mm -hmm. but just a few days before we got there, we were told by the people in Pearls uh, that a group of white people, they said it came there and were digging. They were tourists who paid it to come to Grenada and maybe hang out when they're dug up free of cost and left with stuff in Grenada. Yeah. And I, we were saying that sounds kind of almost crazy. In some countries like Barbados, you go, you go to that, um, to that uh, underground, the Harrison, Harrison Cave. You can't, yeah. you can't even touch anything in the Harrison Cave. Mm -hmm. You can't touch it with your finger in the Harrison Cave. And we have people. So, so let's to get back on track, um, Mr. Livingston, I think, the the responsibilities on us, I guess, and now that you've mentioned it, we will do our best to get Tivoli dramas back on track. But then that not that not that you burn out, but that you still have it, the passion and the fire in you. Because it's not just in drumming your passion is we've seen that you have that as a child. So it wouldn't be hard to, to rehone that that um <laughs> ability in you so you can continue to let Grenada 
And I must also say, I do like the fact that I think you and Godfrey um, One thing for the is a scholar. And so you have a show called We Culture. And I do enjoy the show. I just I just got onto it and I enjoy it. And I think it's a little bit of, as Shamin say, preserving for prosperity because thank God for the internet now. Um, thank God for the internet also that you have the drama. The only thing I find too, in terms of your videos being there, you don't have a person who's marketing and there was nobody, and our society is kind of missing that. Somebody who would always present your work. So somebody who's, I couldn't find your records. You're talking about, what are you talking about? Talking I'm talking about from culture to school. You're talking about big culture, you're talking about me. I'm talking about overall, okay. overall. Let me just say, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. That was probably one of our weakness mm -hmm. in the TV the drama. But let me just say, in terms of the work, our, of my, my, my final major piece of work for the TV the Germans, we from the very beginning, after five years of Tivoli Dreamers, we, we were seeking for a home, a home, um, a place where we can host our drum festival and do everything, our rehearsal place with everything totally. A studio. And then when we explore, we have just built our own cultural center. Oh, congrats. 2020, 20, is it 2019? Uh -huh. 2020, 2018. We have built, completed, completely built our cultural center. Wow. After maybe struggling for close to 15 years, looking for land, looking for funding, hoping for a place. So, and when we explore, because I'm in contact with several, all the groups that came through and almost all the islands, I have some contact. Mm -hmm. There is no other group within the OECS that has a home somebody has lent a steel band, a place or something like that, but for a performing group, no other group has a home except Tivoli Joma. So we have our own building, um, a place where we, we, we host our activities. But I must say the other dong site we do, since COVID hit, COVID hit me in particular very hard because it's like, uh, I mean, where do we perform now? Where do we go? Mm -hmm. So we have not had rehearsal, we have not had anything then, but we had actually built our own cultural center. Congratulations, congratulations. Any government assistance. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, well, assistance. Livingston, I'm going to say though, uh, COVID is the time to be creative and to, you know, go back to the drawing board and, and come up with new innovative ideas. Um, you know, so there's a lot of other ways you can practice, rehearse or, or play. You don't have to. So maybe, you know, spend some time and, and go back to the drawing board and, and figure out a new way to do your business, a new way to run the drumming. You might be Over, I've been I, I've been thinking, I don't know if somebody else can come up with something more creative. Um, but me personally, it's, it's difficult to continue again, exerting myself in that field in the mm -hmm. way I used to. Um, I've tried other persons over the years, hoping that they can run with it. Somebody with the level of passion or somebody with some level of dedication to take this thing and run with it. I'm prepared to give it up okay. um, and give support in the background. But the everyday fronting, like on a Sunday, today is Sunday, like a, if you go back for the last maybe 10 years, every Sunday I had to be over there rehearsing with, with you know, the different kids. So I, I personally has reached that point where I cannot, I cannot continue. So I, I, I am willing, I am willing to let other persons run with it. But it, again, as you say, um, hosting event, doing certain things here, yeah, but going back to the drawing board and training as we used to, no. But if there is some new idea, creative idea that someone can come up with, I'm really open. So Livingston- And it's a bad news for a lot of people, but um, <laughs> it is difficult for me at this I, point. I understand. But Livingston, what I, and, and maybe I missed that too. Um, some of the young children that you're training, that you're drumming with now, can't you start training someone from the start to lead a few people? So in three years, we wouldn't have this issue. Because you see something like that, you, well, you might have a company, right? A regular company, financial company, as you may say, and you might teach them A to B and B to C. What, what you need, somebody has to come with a ready package. Someone must come with a passion, with a dedication, with some level where they want to see that 
go. For me, that is the most important ingredient. So um, I don't know how you could train leadership because over the years I've been looking for some of the senior members to take it, to run with it, to go with it. And then I, I, I have tried, I stepped out sometime for Six Look beyond months. the senior members. Maybe there's a young budding drummer that's 10. Well, there are some young ones. I just sent out the invitation two months ago. I say, if you all could meet among the yourself, because we are basically a youthful group. I mm -hmm. mean, just before we, we, we launched um, of the cultural center, we had something like 33 members. Wow. And I said, you know, if you, if you all are able to run with it, I am ready to give up the key and to give support when I can. Oh, maybe um, you see allow me in you there's a package you you the package with many chapters so you can do a number of things so maybe the person you look you you're not looking for a person because they may not be a person a person in a, another living son so maybe you need to have someone who would do creative the create uh, the creative by the choreography maybe someone to do leadership management someone to do promotion someone to do so maybe you might need a four or five persons to take you one place and one person is intimidated to do all that you've done because they don't think they have the package so maybe you might have to look for four persons I'll teach you, you should take run with the drumming because I think I could see it. As Nautica said, you have already motivated, you, ha you have the ability to motivate people. We all experience it. So you can take one person to be the drumming lead, one person to be the manager, one person to be the promotions person. And But what I want to recommend to you, start, start documenting, writing as you go along, what it took for you from day one to start the thing. And, and have it in a book. So when you pass it on, you can say, here, this is the whole thing. This is the package. So everybody could say, let me see, page five is how to start the drumming. Page six is how to promote. Page seven. So you as a person, you have the passion and everything. You think of it all day. But to, to any person, they might just be there because I like to drum. The other person might be, I like how it runs it. So you have to get the four or five persons it takes to make one of you to make it work. Okay. So we are um, running out of time. And... Uh, I'd like to say, we know Livingston, you have, probably you need to stretch across the field because you have all these assets below you. You have Nautica in the literacy section. You have SAS on the athletic section. I also didn't even get a chance to talk about the job you've done so f in athletics because I, I know you were an announcer. You were involved in the administrative part of track and field as well. But um, maybe we're going to have to do that again, again, um, another time when the drummers get back on the road and stuff, and we can do a, a more uh, a <laughs> succinct <laughs> interview. So, Nalika, uh, what we like to do is now that we're going to come to an end, um, Livingston, I would leave you for last. I will start with your daughter, your adopted daughter. Don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> Your, your student, Nautica, do you have any parting gifts for Livingston in terms of he gave you lots, he's inspired you, he made you grow, he made you participate in things that you know you didn't even have the ability to do. He, he had you had it, even if it was just for activity, just to build your confidence and so on. What do you have to tell or give Livingston before we go? You're muted. I think she's frozen. So I, I'll come back to you now. Oh, are you there now? The difference for me, and I would hate um, to see that get lost somewhere. Like keep the influence in the community, keep the encouragement in the community for the young people and not just the young people, even, you know, the older folks as well. They, um, uh, they, they need someone sometimes to, to, to encourage them or to believe in them. So I would say, don't lose that that factor about you, Mr. Uh, Ricky Beggs. Thank you, Nalika. Mr. Beggs, any parting gifts? Sure, sure. I I I, I would tell Livingston, man, you know, don't give up. I know you fought a good <laughs> fight, but 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 keep the faith, man, and and just keep it moving. Um, there there is a lot, a lot in you to give still. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and continue doing it. One thing I want to say is do not forget our heritage. We must never forget our heritage. You know, and, and, and Livingston, one thing I want from you or from anybody who's listening, somehow I want our principal who have been so involved in our lives growing up 
to have something engraved somewhere with his name on it, Mr. Cresswell Julian. And he have to be affiliated to SAS. Absolutely. As the grass roots up. So that's something to keep in mind, Livingston. And if ever we can talk about it and get some other uh, past students excellent. involved. That's excellent, it. excellent idea. Very yeah. excellent idea. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, Mr. Cressy is, um, I got millions of stories about Mr. Cressy. So, <laughs> Mr. Cressy is what <laughs> memorializing. Uh, over, as Andrea said, uh, any roses for Livingston? Oh, you know what? Um, it just came to mind that song by Maxwell. I know you got a lot of life left in you. Um, and even when I heard you, I've never met you before. I think last week was the first time I met you. But now that you talk about the drumming, I've seen your drumming, which I really enjoy. Um, and then talking to Nautica this week, I'm like, so all the things I thought about you were true. So stay true to who you are and you are that person and you really do have a lot of life left in you. So keep going. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Show me in. Mr. Livingston else. So you've moved from being my, oh my gosh, hero on the road to someone I actually could speak to for the first time in my life. And I've, I've seen that you're not just more, you're more than the person who came to Montrose to help us. You're, you're all that and more. You are a leader, inspiration, you're a drummer, but you're, the, you're almost as the lifeblood of what most of us should be for Grenada. Mm -hmm. don't let this dry i know you i know you may be tired not physically but tired of the state of things mm -hmm. but it only takes one man to to make something different keep yeah. doing what you're doing the tivoli drummers would be alive long after you're gone and you're not going to go anywhere now so mm -hmm. so don't be wearing well doing keep doing it keep persisting you know every drop of water that falls onto a rock eventually the rock is going to crack so just keep that, be that one drop that persistently keeps falling. And I tell you, man, there's, so, because of this podcast, so many other people are going to be raised up to be better because of you. Thank you so much. You've blessed us. Thank you. Okay. And I'm going to end by saying, I hope this video is going to raise some awareness. I hope we get people looking more into athlet athletics. Um, and I really started this so we can romance the past uh, because in times like these, we need, yeah. we need to bring those lovely feelings back. And one of the persons that brought a lot of spark, electricity, sunshine, happiness, all the good things, as good as honeydew, as good as a kiss into a life uh -huh. was Livingston Nelson. <laughs> and I want to thank you for being in athletics, for being a stalwart athlete in SAS, for being my lord of the, the track and field. I want to thank you for being in Nautica's life as a teacher, helping her grow, helping encourage her self-esteem. I want to thank you for being a preserver of culture or a connoisseur of our heritage. I wanna thank you for all these things you, 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 that's in the package of you. I wanna thank you for the time I saw you gliding across York University library floor. <laughs> that, that I want to thank you for the carriage because in how you carry yourself, people are also attracted to you. And when they're attracted to you, you're not just an empty shell you have a lot to give. So please keep up the good work. Hopefully we'll get people talking about how to keep you and Tivoli drummers and our culture going, how to help you uh, keep inspiring kids in athleticism and activivism. So this is the end of our day. Thank you so before very we end, much. Can I say, we'll before we end, can I say one thing? Remember, study, remember, you remember that chant? You remember that chant? Go Livingston, go, don't give up. Go Livingston, go, don't give up. 1981 <laughs> Intercal 4x4. You run down that go man and bust the tail. Yeah. Go I Livingston, go, don't picture. give up. All we've seen is just head bumping. <laughs> I have a picture. I have a picture. I have a picture. 1981. <laughs> hey, <laughs> all right, man. I have it to was say, not, yeah, it's it's Livingston, really last time, actually, two things I need to say. Last after the the last show, somebody called me and said to me, "They're from uh, GBSS, but they're from the country, and they went to school in GBSS. And from from one to form three, they were supporting SAS. But mm, when right. they went to form four, they became a GBSS athlete. And to them, it was GBSS against SAS, not country versus tongue. Right. So I right. want to say that to for the GBSS because most of the GBSS athletes were actually from the country, as you said, and." 
we used to sing a song, well, the intercall I went to, I think I went to two on the way home. It may be a little bit offensive, but I have to say it. We used to go home singing GBS says bum bum bus. <laughs> GBS <laughs> says bum bum bun <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, you know, you know, you know, um, in, in school we had that rivalry, but then you know when you get big because people like like Kenneth Ellis and uh, who we competed against and Jeffrey Neptune. We don't pass each other. I mean at Jericho. So um in school, I think the right value were all good. And um, and that is why sometimes we have to decry the cheating and thing by the officials. Because eventually mm -hmm. we all sometimes may come at one day to run for Grenada. Or or hi, there you go. We may run that for is, Grenada. That is the race oh. Ricky is talking about. Oh yeah. <laughs> now that one was with a guy in PBC. That maybe was the hundred. No, 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 no. That's not the race I'm talking about. Oh, that's not the race, but this one says no, I'm talking about, I'm talking the race where we don't have no lighting. A all I've seen four. is living. Livington head four by four, oh. and the whole the whole the whole of Grenada shouting go! And we only seen Livingston head off so in the, in the crowd like this. <laughs> <laughs> only bumping, yeah. you know, with a hero with a bump, right? I told them, I, yeah, I actually told them that um the, the, the girls and them broke down the fence in that day and came on the field. Yeah, that was the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so what that I'm was... saying, what I'm saying is that um, at the end of the day. When you compete so fiercely against another school, SAS and GBSS, at the end of the day, the better athlete must win. Yes. And it is really not about GBSS or country That's versus sad. tongue. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. talented athlete competing mm -hmm. against talented athlete and may the best athlete win and may yeah. the best prepared school win. And, yeah. um, and at the end of the day, we all should embrace and be yes. friends. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you compete like Ricky would know in cricket. You want to be that team so bad, but at the end of the day, when you pass and you, you know, the match is over, you remember why well, I chose on six on. I could sit down and laugh about that. It's the same <laughs> thing I do with people like Jeffrey Neptune or Kenneth Elizander, or yeah. before Jericho died, or any of those guys that went to GBSS and remember me, you know. And even today, I get a lot of complimentary from GBSS guy. One guy oh. came recently and he said. Listen, you know, but I didn't like you at all, at all. I didn't like you at all in school, boy. You used to beat us up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, he didn't like me. But today we can sit down and we can chat and we can laugh, you know. Yes. So I want everyone to remember that when you compete, you give out your best. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Eugene and I never used to talk on sports. Day. We don't talk. Swan enemy. I want to beat him and he wants to beat me. After, you know, after the sport, we're good to go. So I'm saying that this is important that as good athletes, we must compete, give out your best, but you want that a fear feel. Yes. You know, and 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 so and I must say, this is one thing I didn't get to touch on. Um, because for me, I never believed I was I was never a good part of a team. So I were that's why I was in track and field. I was an individual athlete. But what I see from you and probably from SAS as a whole, maybe GBSS too, because I, I got a story that GBSS came together as a team. They used to do classroom with boards and little X and on thing and how to beat SAS or how to beat McDonald College and so on. But for us in our time, we were just individual athletes. And I used to boast about. I'm not a part of a team because there is an I in win, you know, that's why I'm an individual athlete, but I'm learning so much from you in terms of teamwork. No, and, no but that is how we team. start when you, because I, a school sometime growing would not always have a team. Mm -hmm. um, you take a group of individual athletes. And so the individual athletes must be celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, and then afterwards, when you reach a certain level of strength, you can become a team, team. and then that team gel to make it victory for this team. So that, that is, is so good to is. know. It's so good to know. But that is okay. And I've been, I've been cut down a peg. <laughs> no, 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 that, that is good. You have to be an individual athlete with a school that is not at this stage where they really, win. even as a team, even what you're running as a team, individually, you want to be the next person. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to beat Eugene. We run for right. SAS. I ain't want him to go in front of me. <laughs> I want to win. I want to beat him. Uh, but at the end of the day, when we come with the battle, I mean, if I come first, I want him to come second. Mm -hmm. And I, so I almost saw it is vice versa. Uh, you know, so that right. is how it is. But the team must be satisfied. The individual must be satisfied first. And then the team, you know, you sub subdue your ego and everything for the benefit of the <laughs> team eventually. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. So gracious. Lee. 
Kumar. Right, Nelson. Thank you to the panel. Thank you to Shamian. Thank you to Ava, Nautica, and Raymond. And to the viewers out there, thank you for uh, participating. Continue to support us. Go see Tivoli dramas. Go, Tivoli, go. Go, Livingston, go. <laughs> All right, bye bye now. <laughs> All right, bye, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. bye.